Hi everyone, I'm Gregory Houchins. I'm co-founder of ChemIn. So the production of Portland cement alone accounts for 8% of all global emissions. So that's billions and billions of tons from a single source. And something that's unique about cement production is that about 50% of those emissions come from chemical release. And in a conventional cement kiln, that CO2 is coming out in dirty flue gas, which makes it hard to capture and reuse and sequester. So the other 50% is coming from thermal fuels, which are required to drive this reaction at over 2,500 degrees Fahrenheit. So at Comment, we're gonna target those two areas to create a net zero carbon Portland cement synthesis process. So today, despite there being no truly green Portland cement product, the green cement market is already estimated in 2018 to be over $20 billion. And that's just gonna keep growing as it starts to eat into the overall $300 billion cement market. We're also seeing aggressive commitments uh, in the public and private sphere, such as the uh, 2030 net carbon, net zero carbon uh, building commitment. So to really set the stage for our technology, I want to, uh, to, to make sure everyone understands that today, the cheapest form of electricity is green renewable electricity uh, in the form of wind and solar, which means that right now, is the time to electrify industry, in particular, the cement industry. And at Comment, here's how we're gonna succeed. So uh, we have a patent pending technology that takes the same raw materials, which are cheap and abundant, and uses an uh, electrochemical process rather than a thermal chemical process to create the same Portland cement product. So right there, by replacing uh, the thermal fuels with electricity, we slashed half the emissions. The second half comes from the fact that our process creates a highly pure stream of CO2 so unlike the conventional cement kiln, we're able to easily purify that and, and on its own, it's actually a rather valuable commodity. And so we can eliminate the second half. So as a uh, Swartz Innovation Fellow at Carnegie Mellon University, I'm currently working full-time on this venture. Uh, we're doing customer discovery to understand the market early, what they need, what they want. We're also in the lab developing this technology, trying to de-risk it. Uh, we're building connections with uh, angel funds and other incubator fellowships to understand how to drive this forward. We're also building a winning team of seasoned entrepreneurs, uh, including uh, advisors who are entrepreneurs and, and then seasoned cement executives. Um, and so as we look to the future, we're in the lab today, we're um, you know, trying to de-risk this project. Uh, we're looking towards a prototype in 2022 um, and eventually some venture funds, 2022, 2023 which will take us to our first pilot plant. And ultimately we have the goal that ChemInt will play a key role in decarbonizing one of the biggest emitters of CO2 and that we can help consumers and governments reach that net zero carbon building target of 2030. Thank you. Uh, my question is around um, the product. Uh, I wasn't 100% mm -hmm. sure, are you selling the process that makes the cement? Are you selling the end product? and how that end product might compare with existing cement in terms of price and capabilities, what major differences there are. Yeah, so at this point, we haven't quite settled on the exact business model um, of whether we would sell this process to uh, an existing cement uh, company, license it out, or if we would try to maybe make a corporate, you know, some kind of strategic partnership to make our own plant. Right now, that seems like, you know, maybe that's the way we'd wanna go. Um, but in terms of kind of quality of the final product, our goal is to create Portland cement, the same exact Portland cement, you know, that's, that's seen today because from our customer discovery, that's what people want. There are some other ways to kind of cut corners, reduce the carbon, but it really is not the same product. And so we're really trying to create the same, and maybe even better um, because, you know, cement has some extra additives to it that allow for the chemistry during the synthesis to allow a little bit better, but don't actually contribute to the structural property. So same or better is what we're going for. Thank you. Hi, Greg. Um, Hi. Are you guys raising right now? Wait. No, we are, we're not raising. Right now, we're just trying to do um, some grant funds, non-dilutive. Yeah. Okay, and so just to piggyback off of that, what is the, can you talk about the market size and where you all fit in the, the cost structure. I think you kind of mentioned it in your presentation, but you can elaborate. Yeah, so, you know, right now, the kind of the green cement market almost doesn't really exist because there is no like green Portland cement. 
there's these other cementitious products uh, that are, um, they're usually industrial waste like fly ash or slag that are being sold that you can add to the Portland cement to reduce the amount that you use the concrete. And so we would, we would kind of be directly competitive with that saying, you know, we can just give you exactly cement. And so to get an idea of where, you know, how big that market would be, should you look at the $300 billion cement market? So you look at the current $20 billion cement market, I don't really know where we would fit because it's kind of, doesn't exist right now. So I don't know if that answers your question. <laughs> yeah. Hi, Greg. Um, you mentioned that wind and solar are right now the cheapest forms of electricity. My question is, are those the cheapest because of government subsidies and other um, and other support, or are those actually the most the cheapest per kilowatt or kilowatt hour to generate, or is that something you're projecting in the future in terms of the cost structures of of that use of electricity? So right now it is without government the cheapest um, for development, uh, and a lot of these government subsidies are going away. 2020 or 2021. So, um, so right now, uh, if you're looking for energy development, uh, the cheapest would be actually solar and wind. Hi, Greg, uh, just a simple question. As you move this thing forward, uh, what's the tipping point when it becomes a premium product versus the commodity product that's on the market? Um, so would you mean in terms of like a price point or- Your cogs, you know, uh, you know, you, uh, it's gonna, is it gonna cost the same or cost more to make this? Yeah, so, okay. Um, it, it is likely, so the, the exact number right now, I don't have a great grasp on like, you know, the, the exact number, but it will likely cost a little bit more. Um, one thing to look at is if you estimate what the cost to you know, put a carbon capture system on a regular cement kiln and then do some other carbon offsets so that you are net zero carbon. Um, we're looking at about a 75% uh, premium on cost. It's called the green premium currently. So, um, so when you're talking about what is the tipping point, I think it's interesting to look at, is it, should we be cost competitive with the dirty, extremely cheap process or should we be cost competitive with how difficult it is to get green? And so I think that's what we're targeting right now, which is that higher price on the market today. Can we get lower than that to tackle this kind of, like you said, this premium market, people who care more about the emissions. <laughs>